Hello, in this video we're going to look at the delta method and more specifically the univariate delta method and, and what it does it essentially gives us an asymptotic distribution for a function of an asymptotically normal random variable okay and so we'll um, we'll uh, investigate that so the theorem is let's let x be a sequence of random variables such that this sequence uh, converges in distribution to a normal zero sigma squared distribution and let's just call it x to make our notation easier and where uh, theta and sigma squared are finite constants then this is true we take the function of our random variable function of theta that converges in distribution to zero sigma squared and then squared of the first derivative evaluated at theta and that's assuming of course that the first derivative exists and is non-zero now note that if the derivative exists at theta then it's also continuous at that theta so that'll that plays a part too in our proof um, so let's let's look at it so let's look at x in minus theta okay so that is that's this piece here so this is by assumption we know that this converges in distribution so if we multiply by one and we look at the limit of this and the limit of this so this of course as n grows to infinity that converges to zero and this converges to a, the normal random variable normal zero sigma squared and so, th so this piece converges in distribution to zero, but um, convergence in distribution implies convergence in probability. So we know xn converges to theta in probability. So now by the mean value theorem, we can set up this. We're not going to prove it, although the mean value theorem is kind of a unique uh, theorem unique, unique proof essentially it's a first order Taylor approximation but we don't need that there here so here it's it's the slope of these two functions minus this difference is is the uh, it's the derivative evaluated at some x n theta between these two endpoints okay so notice though in, in on the bottom of the page one we said xn converges in probability to theta. So that, this piece is, you know, it pinches down. And this is always between those two. So if xn converges in probability to theta, so would xn theta. And you can, we can see that by here. This difference is always less than this difference. But this converges in probability to zero. So that implies that this difference converges in probability to zero which implies xn star converges in probability to theta. Now by the continuous mapping theorem, and one of our assumptions that the first derivative exists everywhere, and so that says that this is uh, uh, the first derivative is continuous, so since those converge in probability, this continuous function of those converge in probability. Now by Slutsky's theorem, um, so, so this piece converges in probability, this piece converges in distribution, so their product converges in distribution to this product. And this was a standard normal random variable, okay? But, so this comes down, um, now this piece here, according to the mean value theorem, is this. So we put this in here. And notice that the denominator in this cancels with the denominator in that, and we're left with this. So this, this function converges in distribution to this. And since this is a normal zero sigma squared, we can take this inside that, but we have to square it. So then this converges in distribution to a normal zero and with this variance. And actually then we're, we're finished with the proof. That is what we wanted to, to prove. And so that's the proof of the delta method. Now I have sort of a generic example and then a more specific example. 
Um, so here's a generic example. We know that by the central limit theorem that this converges to a normal zero sigma squared variable, the sample mean. Now if we have a function, say x times 1 minus x, take its first derivative, we get this. So then by the delta method, we know that since this converges in distribution to this, this converges in distribution to this, where the variance is sigma squared f prime evaluated at theta squared. So um, that means that we can calculate probabilities of this function. And the way we would do that is if we're interested in this probability, now somehow we have to make this piece kind of e you know, equal this. So if we subtract this function from both sides, which is this piece here, and then we multiply both sides of this equation by uh, square root of n, and that's what this piece is, then we, and then we divide both sides by the standard deviation of this, which is this piece, so we have divide by the standard deviation. And since variance is positive, we have to make sure that this is positive. And so this ends up being a standard normal random variable. And to find probabilities of being less than some value in a standard normal is, is this. So we would evaluate probabilities with this right here. Now, that was a generic uh, uh, sort of Example here's a little more specific if we use a say a binomial and the in, the in a binomial you often will see this type of function So uh, so if X is binomial or Bernoulli specifically 1p the uh, Mean is P the variance is PQ Let's let this be our function. That's the first derivative and Then we know by the central limit theorem that this converges to a, zero, a normal zero one so, and then by the delta method, a function of each of those um, divided by its uh, standard deviation evaluates to a normal zero one. So that says to find probabilities of, of this type less than some number, we can plug it in. We can make this a standard normal by subtracting the mean multiplied by the square root of n divided by the standard deviation. And then this is it. Well, in this video, th this, this is, uh, I'm going to end it here. And in the next videos, we're going to look at some specific examples. Uh, one is the normal approximation to a T squared. We're going to look at what's called uh, Fisher's approximation. And there we're going to give specific examples comparing like the exact probabilities, probabilities based on the delta method, probabilities based on the central limit theorem, and kind of see how each uh, perform. But if you like the video, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.